Today we're going to be comparing a pair of models from Cybex, the somewhat pricey but long-standing Mios, and the newer, lighter, and much cheaper Melio, which, so far, I've seen widely toted as being so similar that it may seem to many like a good way to get the Mios on a budget, while the truth is that despite their similar urban focus, these are actually quite different strollers. So let's have a look then, taking each in turn, and examining their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity and driving characteristics, before ending with the discussion of which model is better when also taking price into consideration. And starting off with the Mios, the latest version of the model clocks in at just under 10 kilos, folds down to 30 by 50 by 65 centimeters, can take 25 kilos in its seat, and 5 kilos in its underslung shopping basket. The Mios uses Cybex's Lux seat design, adjustable both in terms of reclining the backboard and the legrest, has seat dimensions that will be most comfortable for children up until around 3 years old or so, and has both highly luxurious textiles and a lot of added intuitive details related to ventilation, the harness, and the canopy meant to maximize child comfort and ease of use. As with most Cybex models, the Mios has been designed to use with one hand, both in terms of the fold as well as the model's seat functions, yet, unlike most Cybex models, also feels decently sturdy for its size, the result of that little extra attention to detail that the manufacturer gives to their platinum line, where the Mios's chassis has finely fitted components and strong cross support. When it comes to driving, the Mios's wheel size limits use primarily to urban and light suburban terrain, where the model can handle stuff like gravel, lawns, and broken sidewalks, while anything beyond this will make driving quite uncomfortable and will result in faster than desired wear to the chassis after a year or two. And as far as longevity overall is concerned then, the general build of the model, with its strong bars and reinforced connection points, tends not to loosen too horribly or develop symmetry issues over time, though it's still important to note that the Mios is not the hardiest model out there in comparison to the wider market, and you should still treat it a bit carefully, lubricate it occasionally, follow the weight specifications, and stick to smoother terrain if you want it to last. There have been occasional issues with the folding system, which can be a real problem to get fixed after the guarantee is out, but the cases I've seen have all generally resulted from misuse, leading me to believe that, again, as long as you treat it carefully, there's no reason why the model can't last a long time. Moving on to the Melio, the model weighs in at a much lighter 6 kilos, but folds down to a less compact 375 by 49 by 71.5 centimeters, while the weight capacities in the seat and basket are the same as with the Mios, though they really shouldn't be in my opinion, due to the much less reinforced design of the model with which it achieves that reduced weight. When it comes to the seat, the Melio also uses Cybex's Lux design, but pared down in quality, with a frame of weaker construction, much cheaper feeling textiles, and somewhat smaller seat dimensions, and with an age span for maximum comfort really only lasting until a child outgrows the model's leg rest, which is shorter and lacks the foot support present on the Mios. As far as parent comfort goes, despite having easy to use mechanisms right out of the box, and also having a single, real functional advantage over the Mios in its one piece fold with the seat reversed, the Melio's extra slender and delicate build makes the chassis strain so much against the child's weight that steering and tipping the model, as one must do to go up curbs, often feels as though the stroller may break. In addition, this light build combined with the model's narrow and unstable feeling rear frame makes for a tipping hazard, in particular with children sitting in the parent-facing position where the center of weight is shifted towards the rear. And that light weight also impacts driving, where, despite having slightly larger wheels than the Mios, the Melio struggles quite a bit even in only slightly rougher urban conditions, being apt to get hung up easily on small obstructions and bending and straining against forward motion rather than just powering its way through. And in the end then, looking at longevity, the model structure is not really sufficiently strong to hold up against regular use in the long run, having a wide variety of weak points likely to loosen significantly, a strong probability for developing symmetry issues, in particular with the folding system, and also being highly susceptible to breaking quite easily from a combination of wear and even minor accidents. So, which of these two models is better then? Despite costing significantly less, the Melio is unfortunately one of those strollers that can't be saved by price in my opinion, because its failures are not primarily a matter of shoddy manufacturing. In fact, for what it is, the riveting and mechanisms on the Melio surpassed most other Cybex Goldline models. Rather, the model fails instead simply as a result of its basic concept, being a larger sized reversible seat model with a weight that's less than most ultra compacts, which unfortunately just doesn't leave enough room for the structural strength needed to handle the rigors of daily life for any real length of time. 
while the Mios by contrast, despite definitely being on the higher end price-wise, is actually a solidly constructed model, capable of both performing much better and holding up much longer than the Melio, provided again that it's used for the smoother, urban sort of lifestyle for which both of these models have been designed. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.